Welcome to Theotrade. This is Don Kaufman. In this video, we're going to be talking a bit about implied volatility. You know, that happens to be one of the most, I would consider like, you know, overused terms in uh, in trading is everybody's always saying, well, what's the implied volatility? What's the implied volatility? Oh, the implied volatility sounds so wonderful, but do we really know what that implied volatility kind of means and and what it really justifies? And that's what I'm going to spend, you know, just uh, the next few minutes, sit back, relax, and learn a bit about implied volatility, which, uh, again, Hopefully by the end of this, you are going to be intimately familiar with what that implied volatility really stands for. So, first and foremost, the implied volatility, it refers to, like as soon as somebody says implied volatility, it refers to the options. So one of the big misnomers is somebody says, what's the implied volatility on that stock? Well, there's two types, primarily two types of volatility. There's historical volatility. Okay, and you know if you're if you're here on Thinkorswim and you're looking for historical volatility, you're like I don't know where it is. It it is historical volatility. You can find it outside of charts. You can look at today's you know option statistics, and you can look at like you know current IV percentiles and you know historical volatility percentiles. But <clears throat> what it kind of comes down to historical volatility is the annualized standard deviation of the past stock price movement. So when it comes down to it, what is historical volatility? Historical volatility is kind of actual stock price movement in the past. It's like, all right, how much is this stock really moving? Then there's implied vol. And implied vol is based exclusively on the options within a given chain. So the thing, first of all, you have to decipher is when somebody's talking about implied volatility, really what it comes down to is implied volatility, <clears throat> it's solved for using an option model. Okay, but that's neither here nor there. The implied volatility, it's really determined okay, from the bid and offer of individual options. So when we look at an option market, and here we're using the spiders and we're using like the DS4 2015, 17 days remaining to expiration, whether you use the weeklies or the standardized monthlies, neither here nor there. But the implied volatility is actually being derived from the mid-priced uh, of this bid and this offer. So if a market's a buck eighty-three at a buck eighty-five, the mid-price is a dollar eighty-four. You can actually crunch that through an options model, and you can come out with what is determined as the implied volatility. So come back up here to the information layouts. Now and I'll put the implied volatility. You're like, where does the twelve point four six? In the end, like implied volatility. It's supply and demand. And that's that's so many people miss that. It's supply and demand. You're like, well, is there somebody like behind the scenes here, like a market maker? Dial up the implied vol. Come on. It, it doesn't work that way. It's bids and offers. So if, if everybody was trying to buy options in the spiders, implied volatility goes up. And everybody tries to sell options in the spiders, well, implied volatility ultimately goes down. But in the end... We're not here to talk about just, you know, how implied volatility works. It goes up, it goes down. What is it? Like, and moreover, like, how can you actually use it? So if you look at this individual option, and I have, you know, on Thinkorswim right now, the individual option implied balls here, like 11.93%. But then I cruise over here to the puts, and the puts got like a 174 So you're seeing in the index products, the implied volatility is much higher on the puts and the calls. That's going to be saved for yet kind of another video here, which is called the skew. But how is this 16.68, number one, derived? And number two, what does it really mean? Well, how is it derived? All this 16.68, okay, the way that's derived is, is just to use an averaging model for the most part. An averaging model is used, and they say, well, if I averaged a bunch of this out-of-the-money puts to a bunch of the out-of-the-money calls, dun -dun -dun -dun, I come up with the implied vol. But the implied volatility of 16.69, again, what does that really mean? Well, implied volatility, okay, is standard deviation. And the way that it works, and I'm going to kind of sketch this out for you here briefly, and we're not even going to use the spiders, we're just going to sketch out literally how implied vol works. 
<clears throat> you think of a distribution curve over here, and that's the ugliest distribution curve I've ever drawn, but it's, it's all right. It's all right. And this is a $100 stock. If this is a $100 stock, and let's say the implied volatility is equivalent okay, to 20%. That kind of means within one year. So implied volatility is always standardized, like one year. It means the stock can move up about 20% or down about 20%. And there's no directional bias per se added to this. So it would say, well, we can go up to about 120 or we can go down to about 80. And we're going to stay in this range, okay? That's the range, about 68.3% of the time. Now, I didn't pull 68.3% out of the time. Like, that wasn't, boom, it's out of thin air, right? That is what one standard deviation, okay, accounts for. So you have this $100 stock, and that $100 stock's got a 20% fall. Again, within one year, it's like it can move up 20% or down 20%. And you're like, okay, so that's kind of what implied volatility really means is, so you use this implied volatility. And from implied volatility, we can extrapolate how far a stock can move in a given year. But then, okay, you can use what's termed these expected moves to say, well, I don't care about how far it can move in 365 days. How far can it move in the next 17 days? And that's when expected move says plus or minus $6.12. But now you're starting to use implied volatility for something more than just looking at it and going 16.69. Oh, it's a very exciting number. But now we're going to use implied volatility for yet something very different. Once you have an understanding of like, okay, so implied vol... It's kind of it's kind of giving me what a flavor of the risk, you know, in the spiders. But let's not look at the spiders. Why? It's boring. It's an index product. Let's look at something that's a little bit more, you know, exciting. Something that can move more, right? So you want something risky? All right, Twitter. Twitter. It's been getting beaten up inside and out. I mean, this stock's been up. It's been down. It's been down and down more. I'm just picking on it because it's implied volatility. It's up there. You go like 17 days out, and it's got almost a 50% implied vol. And you're going to notice that the implied volatility, it's different for different expirations. Again, there's different risks for different expirations. Maybe saved once again for yet another video on here. But what I want you to be able to do, okay, just on a day-to-day -day basis, take a look at the implied vol. You know, the irony is I probably know the implied volatility of the products that I trade better than I actually know their last price. And that's a legitimate statement there that, you know, I know where the implied volatility is because in the end, if I'm doing a trade for the next 17 days, do you really think that I'm trading like Twitter? I mean, I'm trading on Twitter, but I don't care that it's Twitter. I mean, this could be anything. It could be XYZ stock. And all that matters to me is that there's a couple letters in a box. There's an implied volatility. Because when you start looking at things just like implied vol, you realize what's the difference between a $25 Twitter and some other $25 stock. So there's another $25 stock out there. okay? And that other $25 stock may have 25% implied volatility. So what do you do? Well, you look at that other $25 stock and you say, well, the risk then is about half. Okay, now let's look at some other stocks. Let's look at Walmart. Why? Why don't I pick Walmart? It's boring. It's boring. Boring, boring, boring. It's sitting right now at about like a 19%. Almost 20%. We'll round it. Let's, let's get crazy here. Let's round 19.74 to 20%. So it's like a 20% vol. Beautiful. Okay, let's compare Walmart now to something like Google. And you're like, how in your right mind, Don, could you compare Google, the king of the all the internet stocks, vast and wide, how can you compare it to Walmart? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, from an implied volatility standpoint, they're almost identical. Well, yes, one is a 757 dollar product. The other one is, you know, Walmart, but that's neither here nor there. The price of the underlying doesn't mean anything. Sure, the market cap of, of Google's a little bit larger. <clears throat> that's to say the least. But in the end, it's about implied vol. 
Okay, and you never thought for a second you're comparing like Google to Walmart, but their implied volatility is similar. Then I pull up something like GE, or like GE's been around longer than I have, and it actually has higher implied volatility than does what? Then does Walmart and Google. Okay, and that's it's one of the ways to start looking at products very differently. You start looking at the implied vols. Now we're going to go over to Facebook. It's 27% implied volatility. You're like, woo, what are you saying? There's almost a third more risk in Facebook than there is in Google, than there is in Walmart, than there is in GE. But Facebook is still, it's only about half as risky as something like Twitter. And that's really the, the first steps in starting to be able to use implied volatility kind of in your day-to-day -day trading out there. Again, this is Don Kaufman over at Theotrade. Enjoy our video.